Hey bookworms, welcome back to my channel and to another review. Today I'm going to be talking about The Labyrinth of the Spirits by Carlos Ruiz Zafon. Hope I'm pronouncing this name correctly. Uh, he is the Spanish author behind the wonderful Shadow of the Wind, a book that I've talked about before that I really, really love. And this is the fourth and final book of apparently a series. It's called The Cemetery of Lost Books. And Shadow of the Wind is actually the first book in the series. Did you know that? I didn't know that until I read this book. So the Labyrinth of the Spirits have a different protagonist. Her name is Alicia and she is a woman, belongs to this mysterious organization that doesn't really belong to the government, but the government does use them when they need to do things off the record, kind of like a very small-scale Spanish black ops, I suppose. And Alicia is sent to Barcelona, which is where she's originally from, to find out what happened to a very prominent figure in the Spanish politic that uh, disappeared without a trace, so she's sent there with a partner to find out what happened to this man, and this leads her, among other things, also to the Sempera family from The Shadow of the Wind, and also, of course, to the Library of Lost Books. Now, right from the bat, this book is a lot darker and grittier and more brutal than the original Shadow of the Wind. In Shadow of the Wind, of course, you do have this atmosphere of, of gloom and some darkness and sadness, but I felt it was very romanticized there. But here I felt that it was a lot more, you know, realistic because it dealt with actual reality and the politic of Spain at the time. Anyway, just a little bit of a background. I think it was the, the end of the 1930s or at the beginning of the 1940s, Spain had a terrible civil war between fascism and communism. And even after fascism won, the life of the Spanish people were not easier. People would be taken from the streets and put into jail for no good reasons. People didn't go to the police because they were afraid from the police force. There were a lot of corruption there. And basically the government was against its own people and the people were really afraid to speak their minds, etc. Now, this is the background. If you remember, Shadow of the Wind starts in, I think, 1944, which is just in the aftermath of this, and this book takes place a few years later, but still things are, are pretty fresh. People who are old enough remember these horrors. Speaking of, this will be a good time to give you a bit of a trigger warning. I said the word brutal a few times in this video, and and hopefully this will be the last time. But yeah, as I said, the police force is very corrupt and brutal, and we actually get to see a torture scene. We also see uh, a brutal murder. So if this is something that you're not really good at dealing with or you don't want to read about, then maybe this book is not for you, so you're warned. Anyway, now let's get to my actual opinion about this book. So one thing I think it's pretty safe to say about all of this author's book is that he is a really wonderful storyteller. He is an expert of this gloomy and dark atmosphere. Also, this book was a lot more detective book than the original Shadow of the Wind, which was a bit more of a mystery book. So I think this change was really nice and fresh. And Alicia's character Although getting on my nerves every now and then, I thought it was a very interesting protagonist because I don't know what about you, but I've never read a character of a female film noir detective. She has lots of scars, both emotionally and physically. She drinks, she smokes, she neglects herself, she doesn't get closer to people because she might hurt them. You know the stereotype. I thought the book was fascinating. I loved reading it. I loved the little arcs that the author created and tons of little characters and like story within a story. This is something that I think he does in every book. I love the detective angle. I love the atmosphere. As I said, he's a wonderful storyteller and like the, the gloomy darkness of the book. That is, of course, until the midpoint of the book where the story takes a sharp turn 
and begins its nosedive. Honestly, I have no idea what happened in the behind the scenes of writing this book, but it kind of felt like Safon, the author, had only ideas until the midpoint of the book, and then he kind of gave up and gave the book to somebody else. Because I'm telling you, in the midpoint, and it's, I think, literally at the very middle of the book, there is such a sharp change in, in plot and in everything, and from then, the book is a mess. I told you that there are arcs there, and some of them end really anticlimactically, some of them end really abruptly, and I was wondering why were these stories even there? And do you remember that Alicia's mission was actually to find out what happened to this politician who disappeared? Well, forget about that. Let's leave that plot. It will be solved, but in very odd, like, it doesn't really matter kind of a way, but instead let's give way to uh, Alicia's very strange relationship with the Sempera family. Which is another thing that really bothered me in this book. The Sempera family, aka characters from the original book, they should not have been in this book. Everything from the original book that appeared in this one, like characters and concept, felt strange, felt forced, and you might even say that these things didn't really appear in both books because the characters from the original book are mere shadows of their true selves. They don't really feel or act like they were in the original book. And yes, I know a few years have passed, but people don't change that much. I believe that there is a certain beauty in mystery, especially in a book like The Shadow of the Wind, where you do have an ending, you do get you know, all the loose ends tied, but some things are still remained mysterious. And here they wrap everything so nicely up, it really felt like it kind of ruined the mystery. Not to mention that there is an epilogue to this book so long that it might as well have been an entire book by itself. And it takes us years after this one. And like, it talks about the deaths of some of the characters. Like, we don't need that. I really don't know what happened in the process of writing this book that made such a huge change in the middle of the book, but I did feel like the first half of it kind of built up to some really good things and then the other half just ruined it and it was really, really frustrating. It has a good start, like for example, making it a bit more realistic and having a bit more of a detective book kind of an atmosphere in order not to make it the exact same thing but I also think it doesn't really add a lot to the Shadow of the Wind universe, if I might call it that. I think that the best thing about this book was the fact that it reminded me so much of the Shadow of the Wind and really made me want to read it again for like probably the fourth time. But yeah, read Shadow of the Wind. It's an amazing book. If afterwards you want to read uh, more of the same kind of a world or concept or writing style, then go ahead, read The Labyrinth of the Spirits. Just don't expect anything too amazing. And that's it for my review, guys. Thank you very much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to click like to show your support and subscribe to my channel if you dare. Also, write down below. I'm very curious. If you yourself uh, are from Spain, tell me what it's like today in relation to the Civil War. I'm curious about how realistically the book portrayed life in Spain after the Civil War. So just if you have anything to add or to tell, just write it down in the comment section. I really appreciate it. So again, guys, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.